and I'm here today with Cody Canada. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's been a long time since I've seen you. It's been a long time. Been too long. Been busy. I know, we've right? All, we've all been busy. Yeah, and let's talk about that. Okay. The Departed. Busy. <laughs> exactly. Busier than ragweed. Wow. And it, that says a lot because we ragweed was 200 plus a year. Yeah. And this is about 220 plus. Wow. Between radio and drive days and shows and yeah. stuff like fly, all the fly dates and all the fun stuff that goes with it. Yeah. Well, what is the difference? A lot of people have their opinions of what the difference is between mm -hmm. the two bands. What's your take on that? You know, my take is, uh, you know, and it's nothing towards anything we've ever done in the past because that, I've had a lot of people say, well, you don't want to talk about it. I love talking about it. I mean, that was 16 years of my life. Yeah. Half of my life. You know, I was, I was, that was my high school band. Yeah. <clears throat> but it, uh, I think it just, it got to a point where it needed to get a little more mature. Mm -hmm. And I felt like we were making the same songs. We were repeating, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. and I noticed that I, I was starting to repeat some things, you know, and it, there was much more to it. You know, Randy wanted to go home, and yeah. there was more things to it, but I think that it needed to step up yeah. a little bit. And I think it all happened at the right time. And uh, now there's, it's not just me stressing out all the time about writing. You know, Seth and I write together, and Jeremy's writing more these days, and Steve's written for 20 plus years, and it's fuller. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, when we first started it, I thought I was being lazy, and I, I, I felt outnumbered and lazy, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it got, it got to the point where I relaxed. Yeah. Like, I don't have to do all the leads, yeah. you know, and when I, when Seth would take one, I felt like, man, what am I, what am I going to do? I'll just play rhythm, you know, just chill out, that's all you got to do, you know, and so it, it's, it's easier. Yeah. It's busier, but it's easier. Yeah. You know, and I, I think the music's more mature and we're not, um, we're writing about real issues. Yeah. You know, and love and problems in the world. I, I'm, I've always been a, that's always been my outlet is if I see something going on, I write about it. It's not necessarily what's going on with me. Yeah. But just disappointment with how the world's changing and uh, my enjoyment of watching my kids grow up. Yeah. You know, and it's... It's definitely different, you know. It's not just three chords and a garage band. It's thought out. And, yeah. And the spur of the moment, <clears throat> excuse me, the spur of the moment jams are a lot, a lot more fun because, like Steve will throw something out. Hey, let's do this. You know this? Like, dang. <laughs> so we'll just hop right into it. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's different, but it's the same. You know, I think if it's anything that Jeremy and I. Or doing or writing or playing, it's gonna sound like what we've always sounded like. Yeah. But with everybody else, they're sprinkling, you know, it's different. Well, and I think that also has to go with the fact that you're, I hate to say this, but you're getting older, Cody. Yeah. We all hey, are. Hey, the, al the alternative. <laughs> exactly. But things change. Our lives change. Mm -hmm. Like you said, your kids, that, but, you yeah. know, having kids changes the whole priorities list, I think. Yeah. It so makes it, makes it the first priority. Exactly. And you're no longer, you know, selfish and makes it harder to leave home and but it with the love that they give and the love you give back you know it, it makes for better songs i yeah. think i think so that's right i mean your the album is incredible you guys have put out a lot of really great stuff in the past and i know that there's a lot of stuff coming out that's going to be great too there is there's a lot of well hopefully it's great i, I, think, <laughs> I think it's good well as long as you're happy man that's the way i've always worked <clears throat> you know i've if if i like it I don't really run it by anybody else. You know, I, if I feel com comfortable and confident, then let's do it. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the guys are the same way, you know, but we never recorded something and sent it to somebody and said, what do you think? Yeah. You yeah. know, we always, like we've got like three or four right now that we've been playing for since December. And by the time we record it, I mean, it's, gonna be old news yeah to us. yeah but that's good because we'll be comfortable enough to record them and we'll get all the the kinks out of it by the time it's record time exactly exactly well let's talk about the current single okay prayer for the lonely okay that's an incredible song it's a good tune I uh, there was two songs on the record that were written 
while we were recording. And uh, I was off doing something, and Seth was at home, and uh, you know, we lost uh, people in the music world. Uh, we had two mothers in the band that passed away, seriously back to back. Yeah. I mean, it was back to back. <clears throat> one was one had been coming, and the other one was just it happened. So it it was a lot of sadness, yeah. and uh, Seth's a very spiritual person, and he he said he wrote it in about twenty minutes. And usually we wait to get together if we have an idea we get together, but sometimes you can't do that. Yeah. Sometimes it just happens, and he sent it to me while I was out doing something. So what do you think? I said we I say we record it tomorrow, so we did. You know, and we we got in the studio, and that was one of the first things we did that day, and it. It helped, you know. It, it was it was healing for us because the loss of musicians and moms and just the sadness, you know. And I'm a spiritual person as well, and I think that you have to when things go bad or when things are good. You know, a lot of people forget when things are good. You mm -hmm. gotta you gotta talk to the man. You gotta you do all this sinning and partying and good times, and every now and then you gotta look up and go. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but it, it was healing for all of us, you know, when Seth wrote that, it was what everybody had been feeling, you know, and he, he did it. That's a great song. It is a good one, you know, and it, uh, at first, people didn't know what to think because it was so different from what I'd been associated with. Mm -hmm. And now, we have, to, if we don't put it at first in the set, I mean, it'll, about the fifth song, people are screaming it. That's, that's a good thing. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Well, let's go back to talking about kids. I have a nine-year-old son. Mm -hmm. And last night I was trying to think of some fun things to talk about, and my son was helping me. And yeah. so I have a quick list of, of questions that I he came I, up with. I cheated. I saw him last <laughs> Okay, well, that's okay. You're <laughs> gonna, we're going to do it kind of rapid fire. Okay. Okay. So let's start off with what's your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. Are you hungry? Not now. Do you like spaghetti? Love spaghetti. Do you like squirrels? Love squirrels. <laughs> I love you? squirrel spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I think the kids will like that one. Uh, do you like to go fishing? Love fishing. Do you take your boys? Oh, yeah. I can't go fishing without them. Yeah, yeah. No way. Uh, have you ever been to Minnesota? Been to Minnesota several times. That's a strange question for a nine-year-old boy. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> um, have you ever used camo toilet paper? That I have not. Oh. I have not. That doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put that on the bucket list. I, I think, think it's supposed. To, I think it's white for a reason. <laughs> um, do you like to drink through a straw? Yes. And describe your best day. My best day is my favorite thing in the world to do is to wake up and make breakfast for my kids. And if they do have to go to school, take them to school and then start the process of playing and writing until they get out of school. Yeah. And then. Pick them up and cook dinner, and we all go to bed in the same bed. Four of us, the same <laughs> bed. But uh, that's that's my perfect day. This, it really is. You know, there's there's two different worlds we live in, and at home that's perfect, from top to bottom. When I can talk Shannon into not going to work <laughs> and keeping the boys at, at home, and then on the road, every day's perfect. It doesn't matter if there's 50 people that night or 500 people or whatever it is. You know, it's we're playing music for a living. Two different worlds. I'm home with the kids, perfect. On the road playing music, perfect. That's awesome. There's no in between. That sounds like a pretty good deal. That's a good deal. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trade for anything. That's great. Thank you for coming to the corner. Yeah, you got it. Thank I you. Appreciate it. Prayer for